went to New York, I had forgotten what the situation was. There were no girls there. They were supposed to meet him at a diner, didn't show up. And we went to his parking lot where he had a few things to do. Change his clothes in the shack and back and spruce up a bit in front of a cracked mirror and so on. And then we took off. And that was the night Dean met Carlo Marx. A tremendous thing happened when Dean met Carlo Marx. Two keen minds that they are, they took to each other at a drop of the hat. Two piercing eyes glanced into two piercing eyes. The holy con man with a shining mind and the sorrowful poetic con man with a dark mind that is Carlo Marx. And from that moment on, I saw very little of Dean and I was very sorry too. Their energies met head on. I was a lout compared. I, I couldn't keep up with them. The whole mad swirl of everything that was to come began then. It would mix up all my friends and all I had left of my family in a big dust cloud over the American night. Carlo told them of old Bull Lee, Elmer Hassel, Jane, Lee in Texas growing weed, Hassel on Rikers Island, Jane wandering on Times Square in a benz benzedrine hallucination with her baby girl in her arms and ending up in Bellevue. And Dean told Carlo unknown people in the West like Tommy Snark, the club-footed pool hall rotation shark and card player and saint. He told them of Roy Johnson, Big Ed Dunkel, his boyhood buddies, his street buddies, his innumerable girls, his heroes, heroines, adventures. They rushed down the street together, digging everything in the early way they had, which later became so much sadder and perceptive and blank. But then, they danced on the street like dingledowdies, and I shambled after. I've been doing that all my life, running after people who interest me, because the only people for me are the mad ones, the ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time, the, the ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the stars. And in the middle, you see the blue center light pop. And everybody goes, aww. And what do they call such young people in Goethe's Germany? Wanting dearly to know how to write like Carlo, the first thing you know, Dean was attacking him with a great amorous soul such as only a con man can have. Now, Carlo, let me speak. Here's what I'm saying. I didn't see them for about two weeks, during which time they cemented their friendship to fiendish all day, all night talk propositions. Then came spring, the great time for traveling, and everyone in the scattered gang was getting ready to take one trip or another. I was busily at work on my novel, and when I came to the halfway mark, after a trip down south with my aunt to visit my brother Rocco, I got ready to travel west for the very first time. Dean had already left. Carl and I saw him off the 34th Street Greyhound Station. Upstairs, they had a place where you could make pictures for a quarter. And Carlo took off his glasses and looked sinister. Dean made a profile shot and looked coyly around. I took a straight picture that made me look like a 30-year-old Italian who'd kill anybody who said anything against his mother. This picture, Carlo and Dean neatly cut down the middle with a razor and saved half of each in their wallets. Dean was wearing a real Western business suit for his big trip back to Denver. He'd finished his first fling in New York. I say fling but he only worked like a dog in parking lots. The most fantastic parking lot attendant in the world. He can back a car 40 miles an hour into a tight squeeze and stop at the wall, jump out, race among fenders, leap into another car, circle at 50 miles an hour in a narrow space, back swiftly into a tight spot, hump, snap the car with an emergency so that you can see it bounce as he flies out, then clear to the ticket shack, sprinting like a track star, hand out a ticket, then leap into a newly arrived car before the owner's halfway out, leap literally under him as he steps out, start the car with the door flapping, and roar off to the next available spot, arc, pop in, brake, get out, run, working like that without pause, eight hours a night, evening rush hours, and after theater rush hours, in greasy wino pants with a frayed fur-lined jacket and beat shoes that flap. And now, he bought a new suit to go back in, blue with pencil stripes, vest and all. $11 on 3rd Avenue with a watch and watch chain and a portable typewriter. 
with which he was going to start writing in Denver and a Denver rooming house as soon as he got a job there. We had a farewell meal of Franks and Beans in a 7th Avenue Rikers. And then Dean got on the bus that sent Chicago and ro roared off into the night. There went our wrangler. I promised myself to go the same way when spring really bloomed and opened up the land. And this was really the way my whole road experience began. And the things that were to come are too fantastic not to tell. <laughs>